Yes, awesome. Okay, apologies for the delay. I'm happy to kick things off now. Um, welcome everybody to the Open XLA community meeting. Um, we always start these meetings with an overview of what Open XLA is and what um, is the mission of this project. So we're building an open state-of-the-art ML compiler ecosystem um, collaboratively with our hardware and software community using the best of XLA, Erie, and MLIR. Um, and we generally kick these meetings off with introductions in case there are any new community members who are joining the meeting for the first time. Um, so if anyone wants to pipe up um, and introduce themselves, please go ahead uh, and also feel free to do so via uh, Zoom chat in case uh, you don't want to um, do so live. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Chen Guang, and I work in the uh, HTPU compiler team at Google. Um, yeah. Hello, everybody. My name is Oscar Hernandez. I am from Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and I'm very interested in this effort and to find ways that where we can collaborate to support some of these activities. So, welcome, Oscar. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, hi, from, from my side, I'm Florian. I'm part of the usability and infrastructure team at Google. Thanks for joining us, Florian. And um, we also have Reed from San Bonova um, in the chat. Welcome, Reed. Okay, uh, feel free to continue to introduce yourself um, as we go through the meeting. Okay, so, oops, one second. Um, so just an overview of our project uh, collaboration channels. And um, specifically, we have some updates to how we're running these community meetings. Um, so they happen monthly on Zoom every third Tuesday at 8 a.m. Uh, we aspire to, whenever possible, propose um, our agendas ahead of time, a uh, week prior to the meeting, this will happen in OpenXLA Discuss, our mailing list, and also in the uh, community meeting notes, which is a public document um, that we've published and we'll start using um, starting with this meeting. That's also a great place to add any agenda items um, that you're interested in discussing, uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, we record these meetings and share the recordings and slides publicly uh, the day after on our YouTube playlist and also in our OpenXLA uh, community meeting slides folder, uh, which are both linked to here. What you can expect from these meetings are development updates, um, overviews of active design proposals and RFCs, community topics, and um, and also any small tech talks from the community uh, that that the that members want to share with us. And again, I'll, I'll have more to say on that later. Um, we do also uh, have the ability to set up one-off technical deep dives. Um, and I recently posted in the mailing list how you can propose um, and host a, an ad hoc meeting um, if you choose to do so. If you would like to propose future community presentations and discussions, we're going to be tracking these um, future uh, agenda items in our meeting notes. So we have a, a place where anyone who is uh, a member of the OpenXLA discuss mailing list can propose future items of discussion or tech talks that you'd like to present. Um, so please, we'd love to hear more from the community um, and really encourage you to, uh, to add yourself uh, to the roster of presenters. Also, we're looking for um, future meeting hosts. I've been hosting these meetings uh, monthly, and it would be great to have additional community members fill in that role. Um, I've added a sign up um, for future uh, community meetings, also in the community notes. Um, please, uh, please sign up and help us run these meetings uh, effectively. Um, we're trying to figure out ways um, to 
set up community uh, hosts who have not done so before to, to lead these meetings really easily. Um, and we'll be adding more details to, um, to that host sign up section. Here's an overview of our collaboration channels um, in the community. The most important one uh, to take note of is our OpenXLA Discuss mailing list. Um, that's a great access point for basically everything that's going on in the project. Um, and I'm going to go through a few brief community updates before we hear from our technical presenters. Um, we're going to hear um, from Sandeep Dasgupta on um, the uh, quantization spec um, and progress that's being made there in the stable HLO community. Um, we're also going to hear from Florian um, on a, a recent benchmarking strategy proposal, as well as um, a proposed uh, universal benchmarking suite for OpenXLA. Super excited about that. So recently we had the OpenXLA Developer Summit last um, April, which is why we didn't have our monthly community meeting um, last month. And this went really, really well. We were excited to have 80 people in attendance in person and 50 people um, attending virtually. We had a great uh, group of presenters from various companies um, and we published all of our slides and videos from our recorded sessions in the, the uh, Google spreadsheet agenda, which I've linked to here, still compiling some of the notes from the technical breakout sessions. So if you have any notes from your technical breakout session, please, uh, please share with me um, and I'll get them added to the agenda. Um, and just an overview on the technical discussions that we had at the summit. Um, here's, a, here's a list of the topics that had their own um, roundtable breakouts. Um, again, trying to get notes from all of those sessions up and added to the agenda. Um, and this went so well that we're hoping um, that we will be able to do a uh, free to attend um, public and, and um, uh, additional summit in the fall, um, TBD on, on the date and uh, venue for that. But um, we're, we'd be really excited to repeat this and open it up to even more community members. And um, here are our active RFCs, just to signal boost some of the RFCs that are open right now in the community. Um, we have a couple uh, from uh, looking at stable HLO-based input in Erie, which is a follow-on from uh, a proposal and a plan to sunset, uh, sunset um, MLIR HLO in the uh, in the OpenXLA community. Um, I think we have an active discussion on that uh, in OpenXLA Discuss, so please take a look at that. Um, we have a couple of benchmark suite proposals that are open right now, as well as a proposal for first-class Triton support in OpenXLA and vGPU. Um, all of these are open. The benchmarking strategy proposal will be closing on um, May 19th, and we'll hear more about this from Florian today. So. If you're interested, please follow up in that thread. Um, make sure that your voice is heard before, before we um, close that RFC. And a very quick reminder that we are bootstrapping our OpenXLA governance um, and have recently introduced the OpenXLA Steering Committee. Um, please file any uh, governance-related issues in the community repo. And we're welcoming, welcoming input and we'll be tracking any updates to community process there. Here are the folks who are part of that uh, interim steering committee. And as I mentioned previously, we're looking to dissolve this committee as soon as possible um, and uh, set up the, the core maintainer group um, that we've outlined in the ratified governance model um, also, which you can see in the community repository. All right, um, so moving along to technical updates. Uh, Sandeep, you're up to talk about the quantization spec status. Sure, sure. Hello, everybody. I'm Sandeep Dasgupta, and the goal of my presentation for today is to provide an update on stable HLO quantization that uh, I have been real, uh, recently focusing on. Uh, next slide, please. 
So uh, for the past few months, we are having an amazing community effort in augmenting the stable specification documentation with the uh, The outcome of that effort is as follows. So we have the, uh, 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 the quantized tensor type uh, checked in uh, in the specification document that includes the grammar and the semantics of that. Also, we have the quantized addition operation and, um, and the quantized dot general operation. Now, uh, the specification of dot general is written in such a way that it relies on the specification of other ops like uh, transpose, slice, and reshape. So the specification of those operations are also been uh, checked in, and you can have a look at that. I have, uh, I have cited a link uh, for you to uh, look at it. And uh, here are the uh, uh, things which are in progress, uh, some PRs which are under review. So context convolution operation, and uh, next is uh, so uh, uh, various uh, customers for, of stable HLO quantization have communicated their interest in investigating integer based quantized types, specifically to represent the floating point quantization scale using integer multiplier and shift, and to allow uh, a defined conversion between the two. So, the, this ticket 1475 is about that. So, this is the PR uh, which is under review as well. And thank you uh, to uh, all of you for the productive collaboration. So here are the few next steps that we have. So uh, we will be continuing to work on specifying the operation semantics. Next online uh, is uh, the stable HLO quantized and dequantized operation. Also, uh, we would like to discuss the set of ops that need quantization support and how to prioritize specking these ops. So I have recently, yesterday only, I posted an um, email uh, on, uh, on that. Feel free to let me uh, know your feedback. And also very recently, we are going to hold a community meeting dedicated uh, uh, to quantization. And given that we made some good progress in specking quantization and uh, uh, gathered various requirements and understood the community interest, I think it's a high time we have a dedicated community meeting for that. So I'll be uh, very shortly, I'll be posting uh, uh, the announcement of that in Open XLA Discuss. So that's all from my side. And let me know if you have any questions also. Thank you. Thanks, Sandeep. Does anyone have any um, follow-up questions? All right, um, I'm gonna move along then and hand it over to Florian, who will be talking about the OpenXLA benchmarking proposals that are active right now. All right. Yeah, um, thanks, I, I, I just had, had a quick question oh. on, um, uh, sorry, I, I, I just had a question on, It'll be good to have an end-to-end -end example um, for quantization through stable HLO using one of the like uh, open LLMs uh, because that's being asked for quite a bit, and um, and having an end-to-end -end example um, with like int4 uh, would be super useful for the community. Awesome, awesome. And, and uh, is there any preference on a specific ops for that, or any op? Uh, an example with any op is fine. Just MacMull, uh, the only one they care about is CPU uh, right now, uh, but um, the same, it's just following GPTQ MacMull quantization. Um, I think uh, everyone's heard about Llama CPP now. And so int4 is kind of like the minimum and um, int5 is like if you have, if you can uh, use additional memory, people use that. But having an end-to-end -end saying, hey, start with this script and this will generate a Llama uh, four bit with the proposed stable HLO quantization ops would be super useful for the community to show that we can actually lower the thing and then it's up to the back end to implement it. Awesome, awesome. So, uh, do you mind? So, we, we are having uh, 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 an open PR uh, under review uh, for com uh, for convolution ops. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, add to, I'll add to it. Definitely. Yeah, that would be great actually. We can track over there and make progress on that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Manish. I just have a very naive question here. Um, my question is, are these extensions um, completely target independent? Like, um, I know that you're adding it to stable XLO, but do you think this may affect anything with the target architectures uh, at the end, or, or is it something general that can be applied to any of the targets? Yeah, I think the current the the way the uh, currently the specification is um, uh, developed is that it is very generic. So, for example, if you see the add operation, what we are doing is dequantizing and doing a float uh, kernel. So, uh, it, it's one way of implementing it, but 
like implementations can choose like maybe all integer quantization or something so it is pretty general at this point yeah okay thank you i'm um, sorry could you uh could the question asker uh let us know their name sorry um who just asked that question Oh, that, oh, sorry, that, that was me, Oscar. <laughs> oh, Oscar, okay, thanks, yes. thanks, Oscar. Um, yeah, I think that it's super helpful to um, just mention your name ahead of asking questions because that will make it easier for, for the note takers. Thanks so much. Awesome. All right, oh, shoot, sorry. <laughs> I clicked the wrong place, but Florian, I think that you're up. All right, um, yeah, thanks, Leah. So um, I want to talk a bit about our plans for OpenXLA benchmarking. Um, if you could move to the next slide. Um, so the goals of this presentation are mainly there is a, an open RFC um, that's linked here that presents, uh, that basically gives an overview on our current plans and requirements that we've derived for benchmarking efforts in OpenXLA. Um, I mainly want to present this, give an overview of what we're planning there um, and ask and encourage everyone for input on this RFC. As they said, we want to close it um, end of this week. So it would be great to get more input from folks. There's already a lively discussion on it. We've already started incorporating input from partners. Happy to receive more input on this. Next slide, please. And next slide again. Um, so, very briefly, what is it that we, and when I say we, this is a, an effort that is currently staffed from engineering teams at Google, what is it that we want to provide? Um, so for all the compilers under the OpenXLA umbrella, which is currently XLA and OpenXLA, or rather Erie at this point, um, we want to provide um, competition and progression benchmarking dashboards. And we also want to provide benchmarking infrastructure for post-submit and pre-submit regression analysis and warnings. Mostly, we want to focus on high-level metrics, such as wall time, peak host memory, peak device memory, latency, throughput, so basically all these metrics that do not require compiler instrumentation at this point, um, with two main goals. Um, one, giving insight into the progress of our compilers um, to be able to guide investment decisions of all partners, and um, with the regression benchmarks, we obviously want to identify and ideally catch performance regressions. Um, for everything that I'm saying here, there's a lot more detail in the RFC, um, so please do check it out. I'm just trying to touch on the uh, most important points that we're outlining there. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so specifically for competition and progression benchmarks, um, we want to provide dashboards that show the evolution of XLA and ERI over time. We want to compare those two compilers with each other. And we also want to add comparison with third-party compilers and frameworks. The goal here is to, uh, so we're, we're aiming for coverage across multiple compiler and framework combinations, um, namely TensorFlow, PyTorch, and JAX. Um, we have a set of initial models selected, which we will get to later. And the um, these models, basically determine our initial focus set of framework and compiler combinations based on the availability of implementation for these combinations. All of these um, should then run through automated nightly runs, um, ideally on nightly releases or on hat uh, where needed. And um, the data that is collected in these nightly run runs um, should be available in interactive and configurable dashboards that are accessible by the community so that basically everyone in the community can follow along with the progress that we are making. Next slide, please. On the post make regression side, um, this should um, show the evolution of head versus a baseline over time. Our main focus here is Erie. Um, we have XLA still in discussion to some extent. There is a lot of uh, internal coverage on XLA. There is there is also pre-submit coverage on in open source, which I'll get to next. So we'll still need to decide to which amount we can invest resources into um, XLA post-submit regression in open source. At this point, we feel it's not a 
high priority, but happy to be convinced otherwise by anyone. Um, these postulate regressions um, will will be done through automated runs after merges to, to main and should provide some support in finding changes that introduce the, the regression. Next slide, please. Pre-submit regression, this again um, concerns both um, XLA and ERI. The plan here is we want to run a subset of inference benchmarks on PR pre-submits. Um, reviewers and authors should be able to trigger those runs. They need to be explicitly triggered to um, not unnecessarily increase pre-submit time where, where both author and reviewer do not think it's needed. Um, and they will be used to inform decisions. They, we explicitly selected those to not be blocking on a merge because it might not be a super trivial binary decision. You might regress on a small subset of models and it might be acceptable if you're um, if you're uh, increasing the performance on other um, models that might be deemed more important. So it's mainly there to inform decisions. It shouldn't be an automatism um, for blocking a merge. Next slide, please. One of the larger topics um, that the RFC also talks about is um, the idea of reproducibility. This mainly came um, out, out of internal discussions on, on Google's site because we were, as we were gathering the requirements for these benchmarking dashboards that we want to um, expose to the open source community, um, the, the discussion quickly came up, how do we actually want to run these benchmarks? Would it be feasible to um, pass through data that we are generating in internal benchmarking runs? And we land basically landed on, no, this is not a feasible solution. We actually want to be able to, we, we want the, the community to be able to reproduce the results that we are publishing here. So we are um, focusing our efforts on selected models that are available in open source. We will rely completely on externally available infra. Um, it plan currently is to build this on GCP and GitHub Actions. There's also discussions about adding additional hardware um, that might not be available on GCP. Happy to have more input on this. On the benchmark, um, as a Quick summary, we are looking towards enabling this, but the initial focus set of hardware is what we'll have available on GCP, at least at the current state of discussion. Um, we want to provide all the benchmarking tools as part of the OpenXLA repository. So for everyone, everyone should be able to just check out the repositories and start running these benchmarks either locally or on a different platform of their choice. And everyone should also be able to extend the benchmarking tools and the set of benchmarks that we're running. We want to provide um, containers to reproduce the environment wherever possible. So ideally, it's a it's super simple for everyone to um, set up a an, um, set up instances on GCP and reproduce the results that we're presenting. Where this might not be possible because um, because of hardware availability, we at the very least want to provide the exact specifications and documentations of how the data was generated. We have a question in the chat. Will the benchmarks be set up both for current OpenXLA GPU stack as well as for the OpenXLA ERI stack? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. What do you mean by OpenXLA GPU versus OpenXLA ERI? Open XLA yeah. GPU, the current XLA, XLA classic. Right. right. Um, yes, the compare. So the um, compare uh, the benchmarks for comparison and progression um, will be set up for XLA classic and Open XLA ERI. The regression benchmarks will mainly focus on ERI. Does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, sure. So we'll be able to do some standalone benchmarking on the classic XLA as well, right? Is that? Yeah, that's that 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 is that is that is the idea. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, then next slide, please. So this is, um, these are the models that we are aiming towards currently. So this is an, 
initial focus set, um, it has to be pointed out that we expect this list to grow over time. Um, there's already additional suggestions in the review. Um, I want to point out here that our goal in the end is not necessarily to provide a huge, um, a huge library of benchmarks and to completely replace everyone's own benchmarking efforts. The, this is intended to stay a somewhat small and representative selection of models. Um, we want to grow it over time, but the idea is not to have this as sort of a benchmarking as a service um, solution that contains all the models that might be potentially out there. It should be focused on what the community deems as representative um, at any point in time. So yeah, as I said, these are the models we will currently be starting with. Um, these are also obviously listed in the RFC so itself. Um, feel free to comment on there if there's any input on this. Next slide, please. Okay, um, now I want to talk a little bit about the technical strategy. Um, so the current RFC mainly covers requirements of benchmarking efforts, but it also speaks a little bit about the high level um, technical design. And we are planning on releasing subsequent RFCs that will detail this further. One is already, um, is already submitted by Sheo and he will also talk a bit about um, this in a couple of minutes. Um, as a reminder, we probably should put the link to the other RFC on these slides as well. Um, so generally, the idea is we have existing infrastructure that ERI is currently using. Um, actually, ERI is currently doing um, benchmarking on two separate infrastructures that we are aiming at extending and unifying into a single infrastructure, which we have now, um, which we have now termed Ubi for OpenXLA, open source benchmarking infrastructure. And the idea is we, we currently have comparative benchmarks running um, using Shark Tank, and this new infrastructure should replace Shark Tank and is an extension of the current ERI benchmarking infrastructure. Um, the main goal here is we want to fully separate the execution, storage, and analytics components as, as much as possible. Um, with clearly defined interfaces between those so we can then evolve um, and potentially exchange these components individually at a time. The idea is also that we want to publish all the raw data that we're generating during benchmarking runs for individual analysis. Um, on the next slide, this is detailed a bit further. So the high level ideas will have a library of open source models that we're using for regular benchmarking runs. This will be executed through the Ubi framework. The results of these are um, JSON files that land in GCP storage. And the idea behind this is these files should also be accessible by the community. They can basically download them and do their own analytics if the dashboards that we are providing should not give insight into everything that they need. On our side, we will then um, import these files into BigQuery database, which is also um, available on GCP and accessible by the community. Um, and we will use Looker Studio for visualization of various reports. Looker Studio, for anyone who's not familiar, is um, GCP's um, analytics solution for Google folks. This is basically the open source equivalent of Plex. Um, and we will, yeah, we will use this to set up all the dashboards and reporting um, with information drawn from these results. We will also, one thing that is not contained in this um, diagram, but which came up in a couple of discussions, um, during benchmarking runs, um, all the artifacts generated that are, that make repro uh, reproduction of the benchmark as easy as possible should also be dumped um, to GCP storage um, so that partners can have access to the individual artifacts in, generated in various stages of the run. Um, next slide, please. Okay, and here I will hand off to Chi Yu, who wants, uh, who will talk a bit more in detail about the benchmarking um, setup and the repository setup. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Jerry from Google. 
So here I want to talk about um, uh, um, to create a new benchmark suite uh, to support our benchmark strategy. So basically, um, we would like to build a benchmark suite that includes a model and the target device. Um, the open XL community um, is interesting um, from time to time. And uh, this common benchmark suite uh, should live in a standalone repository and uh, it should be a uh, compiler agnostic. Means that if, you, if other projects want to um, integrate or use this benchmark suite in their repository, um, to install this benchmark suite, they should not need to um, install um, the dependency on other ML framework, um, which basically pull in unnecessary dependency. And the purpose of this benchmark suite is that um, we will build our compared benchmarking uh, workflow on top of this. So the idea is uh, we define our comparative benchmarks um, with this in this benchmark suite, and then we implement a workflow um, to run this benchmark suite with multiple compilers, like, uh, ERI and Open XLA, uh, and XLA GPU. And uh, um, the other purpose to um, have this design is that if, for example, ERI and uh, XLA want to test and uh, track regression on this benchmark suite, then they can also in integrate this common benchmark suite into their repository running in their CI. And then um, they can basically test this benchmark suite and track the regression uh, on each common. Next slide, please. So this is the overview of this uh, repository and the relationship uh, across uh, different uh, projects. So basically we have this open XLA benchmark repository to host the common benchmark suite and the comparative benchmarking workflow. Um, our repository can um, integrate, uh, like check out this uh, benchmark repository into as a sub module. So they can reuse this common benchmark suite in their uh, bench, uh, regression benchmarking uh, workflow. And all of these benchmark runs will generate a JSON file and artifact, as we mentioned in the previous slide, all of them are upload to our uh, database and analyzed in our database. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, um, then to close this, um, I quickly want to talk about the next steps here. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, as I mentioned, the um, requirements RFC is currently in review. It will close end of this week. So for everyone who wants his input reflected in there, um, please comment, give us your input, let us know what you think. Um, and I'm hoping on more interesting discussions there. The benchmarking suit RFC uh, is also, uh, has also been um, published. Same thing here. Please comment, please add your inputs uh, to make sure that we're, we have all of the community's input reflected as much as possible. Um, there's a couple of ongoing uh, um, work at Google. So we're currently migrating and extending the existing ERI tooli uh, tooling, um, making sure that we design it for reusability across uh, repositories. We are actively onboarding more models from the suit that we just presented um, onto ERI, CUDA, and XLA GPU. And we have a first version of storage and dashboarding working sort of as a proof of concept that this whole setup uh, works in general. Um, in the longer term, um, we want to increase the number of supported benchmarks, compiler and framework combinations, We're hoping for active community contributions as soon as the groundwork basically is, is laid out. Um, and this will also mean that at some point we will need to open the topic of government governance and maintenance for the benchmarking suit. We are currently committed to bringing the suggested models and um, hardware images up from Google's side. In the long term, it would be interesting to hand this over more to a community-driven effort and um, encourage other partners to um, add their own, add and maintain their own benchmarks. All right, that is all from my side. Um, we have one question in the chat. Can we please have import from Hugging Face in the benchmarking suit? Um, 
so if this is um sorry shio did you unmute because you want to answer this uh yeah but uh, if you have something to say uh, you can go first um I, I i would just have said that it is something um we are uh, we are looking so the plan is not to basically replace existing benchmarking suits such as um, Hugging Face or MLPerf or similar. We want to use these existing benchmarks as much as possible. Um, that's a very high level answer. Um, Shio, I'm happy to hand it over to you. Yeah, um, I, I guess there, there's a concern about like how we um, import. So there, there are two kind of uh, benchmark model. Uh, one kind of is the serialized format we can import. Um, the other kind is uh, like the framework based model like hugging face. Um, for this kind of benchmark, there are some design can uh, can be done um, to, to, to also have those model in our current benchmark suite, um, but uh, but not uh, put in unnecessary dependency if someone don't need to run those framework based benchmark models. But, but yeah, uh, overall, yes, we, we, we have considered this kind of uh, framework-based model. Details uh, is described in the class. Okay, um, another question from John. Will the benchmark run periodically or on every per PR, perhaps on a smaller scale models? Um, it depends. So the comparison benchmark, the comparison and progression benchmarks will not run uh, on every PR. We are planning to run those in a regular um, intervals, probably nightly. Um, the post-submit regression benchmarks for Erie currently are, to my knowledge, running on every PR. The um, pre-submit ones should only be run when needed. And as I said before, so this should run um, on a on, on a manual trigger and not necessarily on every PR. Um, would it be made easy to add new hardware platforms and models? Um, depends on the definition on easy, I guess. But yes, it is it, it is our goal to have this it's sensible both in terms of hardware platforms and models. Um, so. As I stated, our initial focus set is on GCP, um, but it's not technically impossible to um, extend this through um, through other runners. It just hasn't been in our. It just hasn't been a high priority at this point. But from a, from a design perspective, um, it will absolutely be possible to add new hardware platforms. How exactly that will look, um, as I pointed out, we will submit subsequent RFCs on various um, deeper designs um, and hope to address the question more in detail there. Anything that I know Henning or Sheyu want to add? So feel free to interrupt me and, and uh, add anything that I might be misrepresenting uh, here. I have yeah. a, oh. I have a question. Where is the best place to uh, rep recommend or request additional representative models before um, that's open to community contribution? I think at, at this, at the current stage in, um, in the RFC itself, um, further up, I don't have a good answer. I think it's something we need to align on how we want to, to get suggestions for models in there. Um, I don't think we want to get to, to a state where, where everyone just submits models without any previous discussion. I feel like that would move us too quickly into a maybe too large set of models that need to be maintained, but we haven't really touched on, on this topic and how we want to handle this in the future. For now, please comment on the RFC. Thanks. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, everyone. Then I'll hand it back to Thea. Thanks, Florian.
Um, okay, so we have about 15 minutes left. We don't need to take all that time, but I know that there are a couple of open um, community topics that got added to the agenda. Um, so anyone who wants to uh, chime in now is free to do so. I think Mehdi, you had you had a topic that you wanted to discuss. Uh, yes, uh, I sent an email. It's I mean it's it's I don't think it's a topic that is mature enough. I don't have a presentation or anything. Um, I sent an email yesterday to open it to discuss. Um, mostly you're raising a topic that I think is uh, hasn't been um, looked at enough or discussed publicly enough. I'm sure that uh, internally at Google or in various places, people have been looking into this. Uh, but it's about the overall architecture of what we're building, about the transition uh, to include more of ERI in the project, um, especially since ERI joins in uh, December, January timeframe. We haven't got much more information about what's the plan. Um, we just had the slides that says more details to come. Uh, but even at the summit two weeks ago, the only thing we got was a quote saying in the next 18 months, there's going to be a merge of, of XLA and Erie. But um, it would be great to start talking about the big pictures, especially because I saw some RFCs that are changing things. But those RFCs are not positioned in the context of this big picture. And so it's very hard for someone like me, at least, to figure out what are the implications of small changes to the overall design. And uh, yeah, I don't have much more to discuss here, but uh, I don't know if uh, we need more dedicated meeting to that and start getting into kind of diagrams drawing. I tried to draw some diagrams with like my limited uh, information on how the projects work, uh, but they are likely incomplete or incorrect in some aspects. And so they are more an invitation to be corrected than uh, a set plan. Uh, I just felt I, I, I didn't want to send an email complaining about the lack of information. So I felt I would contribute some initial um, drawings. Um, yeah, I don't know who else can uh, chime in to help on that. Yeah, I, I think many, that's a very good point. I mean, I think it's something that we definitely need to improve on. I think with both like the documentation and diagrams. So I, I think that would be, uh, I think very welcome. And I think definitely having, you know, you contribute there as a, as a neutral third party, I, I think will, will help, I think in clarifying a lot of terminology that for some of us may be a little bit more on the ingrained side. Uh, so yeah, definitely more work to do. And I think potentially uh, you know, getting a, a small group together to just like jumpstart that and then bring it for discussion, I, I think would be a great idea. Yeah, I think a work group would be would be great if we can spin off something and set up, I don't know, a weekly meeting and try to 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 meet and and draw that. I don't know what the best contact on the XLA ERI side is. It's Stefan, Matt, um, I don't know, George, those kind of person. I, on, on Erie, I don't know, you, maybe, <laughs> Jacques might be a good person to get involved there. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's that's a good group of three people. So we have like a, a group of four starting potentially like a meeting. That, that sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, Stefan, are you, are you around? You want to chime in on that? Yeah, I mean, um, I am around. I'm just lurking in the background uh, and listening. Um, so um, I, I do agree, right? So I think there is a shortcoming there, and it would uh, would be uh, useful for uh, for the community and everyone involved uh, to have a big uh, picture idea of where this is going. Uh, meeting sounds great to me, um, uh, like a series, a work group, something like that, so that we can kind of hash out the initial thing, uh, and then get the community involved in uh, kind of what we thought about, and then kind of start a process of of iterating. So I would be excited to contribute, um, for sure. That sounds great. Um, I will assist in getting that set up um, from a logistics perspective. So excited to, to kick that work off. And I agree that it would be really helpful to have more of a shared context on, on the overall architecture that will provide, uh, you know, a, 
a reference point for the RFCs that are being submitted under with that implicit architecture in mind. Um, okay, so we have a couple of more comments that came in through the chat. Um, let's see. Uh, Oscar mentioned that we have compute resources at Oak Ridge. Um, if the community is interested in that, that's awesome. Um, and then Andre has a question. Um, what is the official approved by OpenXLA method to convert PyTorch ecosystem to stable HLO MLIR? Is it Torch MLIR? Um, if yes, it's quite sad since now it feels on simple ops um, like constant. Um, so it can't be used for simple manual experience, experiments for a medium number of N nets. Is there anyone online who would be able to follow up on this question? If not, I think that this might be something for Shaheen and or Eugene um, Bremikov to follow up on. So I'm going to put this question in um, our notes doc and, and plus them into the document to see if they can answer asynchronously. Does that sound good, Andre? I will assume yes. <laughs> um, John C says, I'm still hoping to implement some CPU collective ops once I clear my backlog from holiday. Hopefully I could use some compute resources to validate. Ah, that's in response to the compute resources offer. Okay, thanks, Andre. Sounds good. Um, all right, so we have 10 minutes left. Um, we can use that for additional topics that the community would like to bring up, um, or we can meet, close the meeting early. All right, I am hearing that we're closing the meeting early. Um, thanks everyone for participating and thanks to our presenters. Uh, as I mentioned before, we would love to get more um, presentations and topics from other companies in the community. Um, please take a look at the notes doc and add yourself to the, uh, the upcoming list of agenda items. If you wanna discuss uh, offline first before proposing something to make sure that it's a good fit or to get more information on, on how to get set up as a pre presenter, um, please feel free to reach out to me, um, Taya at openxla.org. Uh, that's T-H-E-A, Taya. Um, and would be really, really uh, excited to, to have more of you. Awesome. Thanks so much, everybody, uh, and see you next month.